Okay, good afternoon, golf friends, and welcome to our webinar series, Tuesday Traces. As you know, the purpose of this webinar is to show how the V1 pressure mat is used by some of our most exceptional industry partners. Every Tuesday is fun, but tonight is super special for us. We get to talk to a V1 partner, really a V1 family member, and a golf coach of some really, really successful tour players. Uh, a few quick housekeeping items. Um, as you know, we record these webinars this will be posted on um, our YouTube channel within the next few days. Also, not to worry, we are not going anywhere, but we are going to host Tuesday Traces every other Tuesday. Uh, the girls and I want to enjoy the spring golf season and we want to get out on the course, so we're going to do it every other Tuesday night. We absolutely love answering questions, so please post them in the chat window on Zoom or Facebook. Uh, we'll do our best to get to all of the questions. I expect we will have a ton of questions tonight because Eric is a very high-level uh, golf instructor. V1 Sports is a 25-year-old company and the leader in delivering video analysis and instruction solutions to golfers and golf instructors around the world. Our development team is leading the industry with software integrations, including BodyTrack, Foresight, and SkyTrack, and many, many more. Uh, I am Mandy Von C. I am the regional sales manager for V1 Sports based in the low country in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, we love our, well, I love my team. I love my job. I love Tuesday Traces and we love the tech, putting technology in the hands of golfers. Um, we are really excited about the high level competitive golf coach that we have tonight. Coach Eric's holistic approach to instruction focuses on full swing technique short game, golf fitness, mental preparation, equipment evaluation, and tournament preparation, very much tournament preparation. Coach Eric is an eight-time PGA award-winning instructor and the coach to four-time PGA Tour winner Esteban Toledo. Uh, he has also worked with 11-time winner and 2009 senior PGA champion Michael Allen. He's also worked with Brendan Pappas, Biochem, uh, God, lots of folks and Mr. Billy Harmon, which we are going to hear about tonight. Uh, Eric has a proven track record of helping develop junior competitive players. Uh, we are not going to be talking about beginners tonight. We are definitely talking about high level competitive golfers. Uh, he has the PGA Tour credentialed instructor. He's an elite junior coach and collegiate counsel. He's the 2011 SC PGA Teacher of the Year. The two, 2017 Top 25 Elite Junior Coach and the Golf, Golf Digest Top 100 Fitter in 2011 and 13. And he thought he was going to be a professional soccer player years ago. Eric, thank you so much for joining me on Tuesday Traces. That is quite the resume. Oh, I'm tongue tied. Thank you, thank you for that was being pretty here. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You, it's all smoke and mirrors. All smoke and mirrors. Did, did you think I was going to add, you to want to be a professional soccer player? Into no, I didn't know. I didn't know you were going to add any of that, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, that was my sport when I was young. I thought that was what I was going to do and ended up uh, not, not going as far as I thought I would. Well, we, I uh, you know, that, I started playing golf. So yeah, that was uh, special to us when we learned that about you in our um, Zoom yeah, test, because as you know, our CEO, Brian Finnerty, was a professional soccer player. Yeah. So. Yeah, he went we a little. Like he went a little further than me, but I I still hold some scoring records back in my my hometown. Uh, but I also hold the red card record too. So. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> you that, have to that be, would be more like, That's so funny. Um, okay, so I will tell you. I always ask some some folks that might know you well um, some things about you before I start Tuesday traces. I asked Chris wow. McGinley. I asked Chris. I asked multiple people about you, but Chris McGinley said. You know, I said, tell me something about Eric that's special. And he said that when you won the SC PGA Teacher of the Year at Tustin Ranch, of course, um, that he thought that was a big career moment for you. And that since that, you've done literally nothing but climb your career ladder and have had success after success after success. So I thought that was kind of cool. Can you talk to that award and how he was really like watching your career and super impressed by that win and how quickly it escalated your, your career path. Can you, can you talk to that? Yeah, I was honored to win that. I mean, as, as a teacher in the biggest section in the PGA in the entire country, it was a, it was an honor. We have some incredible teachers down here. Um, and, you know, part of it goes to, I, I give, you know, Chris a lot of credit for the help that he gave me over the year. So I don't, I, I never take credit in the speech that I gave when I won the award. 
I credited my team and, and, you know, I had seven, eight PGA instructors working underneath me at the time for the 21 years I was at Tustin Ranch. And the support that I received when Chris McKinley was the VP of marketing at, uh, at uh, Titleist uh, was incredible. I'm still a Titleist staff member, um, but it was an honor to win that award and just to be nominated for it um, was incredible. But to win it was, was, I don't know if it's a dream come true, but it's, it's, it was very satisfying, but the support that I got from Chris and, and uh, my staff and, and my facility was, was part of the reason I won that award. Big cool. One. Well, you've, you've done big, good, big things since then. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, and if you guys, if you don't know, Chris McGinley was the uh, VP of sales and marketing for Tylus for 21 years. He has now rejoined the V1 team. We are thrilled. We are so excited to have him. He is awesome. If you don't know him, call him, tell him how he's happy amazing. we are to have he's him. Amazing He's awesome. Um, okay, so I'm really excited to learn from you tonight, and we learned something during our Tuesday traces that I expect we'll be rewatching uh, a ton. Can you share with our audience a little bit about who you're teaching? What level? You know, what what is the? I know it's not beginners, but talk to us about your student base. Um, I could. I probably teach 90 percent of my student base is competitive players um and that includes junior golfers ages i think the youngest kid that i teach um is seven years old and he swings like he's a seasoned tour professional um and he has the mental you know stability of one it's amazing um i don't teach him that young normally but he he i taught his older brother for a long time and and uh that's the type of player i coach um the tour players that i've gotten a chance to work with esteban toledo i worked with for many many years um, I even caddied for him at the 2005 AT&T when his caddy couldn't get back in the country. So um, coaching and caddying with Esteban the year that Phil Mickelson won the uh, AT&T at 22 under par was kind of exciting. Um, but tour players, it's very, very difficult unless you're a Harmon. You know, you don't, you don't get too many too often. I've had a great opportunity to work with, with Esteban Toledo and we had four or five wins together. Um, Michael Allen, the PGA, you know, 2009 PGA senior champion. Um, he reached out and we, we did a lot of work before the Toshiba classic down here in Newport beach where I live, um, to, to work on pressure. Um, but he had a coach prior as well. And we worked on the, the pressure map together and he was interested in that, um, uh, made some changes there. Um, but I, I work 90% of the time with competitive junior golfers that, that have the desire to play competitive golf at the high, the next level, whether it's high school to college, middle school, to high school. Um, and that, that's what I do most of the day. Nice. And when you're working with those, tell, tell everyone what technology you're using. I'll tell you what I I've used, I've probably used pretty much everything on the market. Um, but the two things that I always go back to is, is my body track. I've been using the body track, the V1 mat, um, since its inception, I believe Terry Hashimoto, you know, hooked me up with it when it was the green mat back almost 10 years ago. It may have been more. Um, and then my track man. Um, both things, both things measure data for me. They give me the data that I need to help my student. And I use it not to, not to inundate my student with information and confuse them, but to use it for my arsenal to get them to do what we need to do. Um, in terms of body track, the biggest thing for me, and it, it, it took me a little bit to figure it out. The first year that I started using body track, I was cool and getting into the traces and and looking at you know linear trace and a power trace, which we're going to go over some of the examples I have with my players here. Um, um, but what I noticed after using it with my high end players, especially with Esteban, is that my students were able to control the face of the golf club at impact when I had the pressure, when I could help them get the pressure in the right location at the right time. And that okay, wait, huge. wait, wait. That quote is so important. And I put it in my notes and in my invitation okay. for tonight. I don't know if you caught that. I think that what oh. you just said is so important. We need to say it again. I hope the girls will put it in our chat. You right. can help your players. Say that again, just one more time. Well, I can help my players control their ball flight better when we can get them to control the face at impact. And if the pressure isn't applied at the right location in the feet at the right time, um, you can have some disastrous um, outcomes. And I've had a high level player have a two way miss. And that's one of the things that body track and the V1 mat has helped me do. It's, it's amazing. And, and it's, it's easy to explain to the student. 
So I can spend two years working on my club face and never stand on a mat. How quickly can you fix that if you give me a mat? Because <laughs> I'm thinking oh. in two seconds. Well, Im immediately. I mean, as Bill's going to attest to probably the first thing he and I worked on was low point. How do you control your low point? If you can't control your low point, in my opinion, you can't be, there's a lot of great coaches out there that'll tell you the same thing. Um, you can't, if you can't control your low point, you can't control the face of the golf club. You can't even bother with the next step, in my opinion. Um, so you have to control the low point. If you control where your pressure is at impact, you can control your low point and it goes from there. It's on and on. It's the ladder going. Controlling the pressure at impact means you control the club face, which means you control ball flight. I mean, right. that's not keeping it simple. Right. I don't know what it is. Okay. Right. Um, let's get, let's look at some stuff. We, if people want to find you, they can connect and find videos on your YouTube channel, right? Girls put that in the, in the oh, chat. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be I great. I, 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 you know, I've been, I've been down here 25 years and my students, my juniors, especially have said, I need to start a YouTube channel. And I, I should have done it 25 years ago and I was too busy doing th other things, coaching and, um, you definitely but I started, I, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's Eric Corby golf, pretty simple with a K and, uh, I'll post some nuggets up there. I'll post a lot of V1 analysis of my college and high school players, what I'm looking for. I have a thing I call the body box that I put them in and um, we have some fun with that. So yeah, that would be fun. I appreciate you guys tuning in on that. Yeah, absolutely. So Eric Corby Golf, go find him on Instagram and YouTube, specifically YouTube. But I got to say, so Haley, our social media director who's here, she always lets the team and I know when we see amazing stuff on social media. Obviously, your Billy Harmon pressure trace video got our attention. So as you know, I reached out to Mr. Harmon. I really wish he was here. I don't see him logged in yet, um, but we will send him, I'll text him. the recording. Um, and guys, I think Mr. Harmon's going to be watching tonight. So if you have questions for him to share them. But he said, um, I reached out to him and he said that he did work with you. He said, actually, his handicap went up four strokes under your tutelage. That's probably about right that's how good I am <laughs> <laughs> he was very quick to say uh definitely not true and he loves you to death uh but he does have quite a sense of humor <laughs> oh he sure does he sure and does I, and I, I loved uh chatting with him so we would love to hear about Mr. Harmon's pressure trace uh I think Anna is going to do a screen share and hopefully you can talk to this There he is. Okay, there it is. There it is. You might want to, yeah, let's, um, you want me to, you want me to go ahead and. Yeah, you can talk to it. If you want Anna to drive it or play it or pause it. I would, just, okay, I'd have Anna just go ahead and play it through one time full speed if we can, just okay. so everybody can kind of see it. And, and I know we got some coaches on here that understand this technology and know what we're looking at. That's obviously Bill Harmon. He's out at Goose Creek at one of, one of the academies I, I coach at, and this is this is this is not the first session that we've ever done together. This was post working on low point and center of mass control. Um, Bill had a tendency to get to the right, like an old school golfer, like like I was taught, um, get to the right, um, stay on the right, and have a lot of excess right side bend through impact. Um, and we tightened that up in our, in our very first session, getting him to control his low point a little bit better by, by keeping the pressure on his lead side a little bit longer. Um, so if we can take it, one of the things that we did, if we can take it to address at the beginning, is you can, you can see, I, I have a hard time seeing those numbers, so I apologize, but I know it pretty well. Um, you can see that he's got you know nearly, oh, there we go. There's 60%, 59.41, depending on where we put it in the scroll, um, he tends, we, we moved it in there. So he was at 60%. And you can see there that, that what Anna just highlighted 80% in the ball of the foot. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit at the end, a little bit about the commonalities of all these players that, I, that I've put on my pressure mats and what my, my friends and other coaches have, we've talked about over the years. But the ball of the trail foot is an important part, uh, part of this equation and where it starts because as he starts to take the club away, I'm a big fan of the trace following the pivot of the body. So as you start to see Bill, what's really cool first is he's at 59.41.
on his lead side. So the left side is uh, the lead side there. And, and it's starts, backwards for the audience. The, yes, the backwards ground, for the audience, correct. Okay. So as, as Anna starts to take the club away, I want you to just do a couple clicks maybe, and you'll start to see Bill actually pressures even more pressure into his lead side right there. He's in yep. the 60s at some point from 59. And that's a little skate move. Yeah, there he is. Now he's 64 and he hasn't really taken the club away yet. So he's pushing pressure to his lead side target side to get things initiated the other way. So force precedes motion. So if he, if he presses to the left, he's going to push him to the right. I mean, and that's, that's something that we see in all good ball strikers there. And I'll talk about it at the end, but he's very dynamic. He's a very good player. Um, as he starts to take the club away, you'll start to see him. Let's go up into about P3 or his lead arm is parallel to the ground. Okay, you can see his center of his center of pressure is not moving. He's we're trying to keep him center, and this is after a lesson um, that we had on not moving to the right so much. So this is there's a reason that ball is in the middle, that little white dot. Um, Eric, do yeah. you want? Are we happy with the weight in his toes here? Um, right now, I'm 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 okay with it. He's he's okay. fairly centered, to be honest with you. He hasn't now. That's the trail foot there, sixty one thirty nine in the toes. He hasn't gone into what we call a counterbalance yet, but his, but his other foot, that one there that you just highlighted is very, very balanced. So he's on yeah. what, what I look for anatomically is the, you know, the cuboid bone right in the middle of that foot. And he's, okay. he's doing a good job there. Okay. Okay, so as we go take it to the top and the go, let's go lead arm parallel. Now you're gonna start to see the pressure start to shift a little bit more to his right. And as he slowly goes back, you should start to see a counterbalance go into his trail hill there it is right there maybe a little more oh he's i see bill's already starting down so what we'd like to see if you he's got 66 now we're really trying to stay centered here so a lot of coaches want their players to move excessively to the right in terms of pressure um 80 maybe is the number that everybody throws around but the longer the golf club is the more pressure you'll start to see move to the right with irons i like to see between 60 and 70 with a driver, which you'll see on, a, on, I believe, the power trace. We may see that. Um, we're going to move 80, 85. I've seen uh, Jason Days at 95% to the lead side. Um, so here, Bill's doing exactly what we've worked on from day one. He's looking very good. And now what, what you'll notice, is if I can continue, is what you'll notice is Bill starts to pressure forward back into his lead side prior to the club even reaching the top of the swing, which you see in all good players. They're starting to transition to the lead side prior to the club finishing the backswing. And there he goes right there, all right? Yep. And there he comes into impact. And he's at 72% at impact in his lead side, which in my opinion, after what we, what we saw in our first session out at Toscana where he, where he coaches, um, that's a big improvement. That's 20 to 25% improvement in lead side pressure. So he's doing exactly what we talked about. And you can see I how much it. he throws the face of the golf club. You want, if you slow motion that face of that golf club in the flat spot at the bottom, it's incredible. By the way, he's, he's, a, he's a plus handicap, by the way. He's, <laughs> he can still shoot 67, 68. So don't, sure. let him, don't let him fool you. I'm not. And what trace would you call this? Would you call that linear? That's pretty linear. Yeah, it moves around a little bit, but that that's very, very linear. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So for all the folks out there that don't diagnose traces, and I tell people all the time, you don't have to. I actually saw Mike Sullivan. I don't know if you know Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan is the East Coast rock star as compared to you on the West Coast. Mike Sullivan's awesome. He doesn't necessarily diagnose the trace. Um, he just uses, yeah. you know, he knows what to do with the shape, right? but he doesn't necessarily say, oh, it's linear and I'm gonna do this with it. But we do see linear in tour players and high level competitor, right? That's the goal. Well, linear to me is balance, right? Linear is very balanced. And I think with linear, you can create both speed and power. Okay, so you get, you get a little combination of both. And for me, linear controls the balance, controls the speed and controls the, the face of the golf club. And that's the most important. And then keeping the center of pressure in the center with a linear trace, that's really good, right? Like really, really good. Yeah. And we're going to okay. see a linear trace. We're going to see, 
probably the best linear trace I've seen um, that I've had on my mat um, in this hour. And yeah, nice. it, it, there's, a, there's an interesting thing on this linear trace that we'll see that um, opened my eyes after I took this trace at TPC Scottsdale, the one we're going to see. Okay, well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to introduce it a little bit um, with that quote while Anna pulls it up. Anna, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to talk about the power trace of the freshman. Um, oh, and while okay. she gets that going, you know, during our Zoom test, we talked about this trace and you gave us a Horveyism. Have you ever heard that word? A Horveyism? Oh, I did? What did I say? Yeah. <laughs> it's the, by knowing the, you said, based on this trace, by knowing the pressure in the ground, you can control the club, club face at the proper time. And you said that in relation, I think, to this trace. Um, and this I is believe, I believe that with every trace, but yeah, this one's, okay. this one's pretty incredible. And I think you said this is a freshman that hits the ball 327 yards. Is that right? You, nobody will believe me after they see this swing. And, and if they saw his track band numbers, he's, his name is Nico. Um, he's a freshman in high school. He literally, I, I call him the baby elephant because he's still trying to, you know, grow into himself here. He doesn't, <laughs> he, um, he's been playing golf one year, one and a half, maybe. Unbelievable. You're not going to believe it when you see it. He's a vars he made the varsity team as a freshman. And I just spoke with him, I think yesterday, and he, sh he shot 34 in his nine hole match already. So I mean, the kid, the kid works hard, but he creates incredible amount of speed. He looks it would big. Be, his speed that he creates would be, would be higher end on the PGA tour. As okay. you know, we all He looks, play. he looks like a big kid. He's a big dude. Yeah, okay. he's a big dude. So college coaches, if anybody out there is a college coach, look out for Nico Tucker over the next three and a half to four years. And you can, you can, contact me and I'll, I'll let you we know. need to send he's awesome. him the, he's gonna be he's gonna turn he's turning into an amazing player right we need to send this, this send this to John Mills at Kent State he loves pressure graphs there you go so, okay that's right anyway tell us about this trace all right well okay so I call it, this is a power trace um you know there's a power z trace that's out there that we talk about a lot um when you just look at it visually it looks a little bit all over the place right which is like wow he's not really balanced he's not you know, I just can't get myself to go linear on here and, and coach a linear trace into this power trace. Um, so what I've done with Nico is I've left the power trace there. It's something that he does naturally. Um, and I've done, I've worked with track man along with the body track, um, to mat do a better matchup at his speed. So I'm trying to get him to understand matching up the face with the path. Um, and to believe it or not, a year ago, his swing was well, well over the top to the left 14 degrees. So We've gotten him okay. swinging out to the right, really bombing the ball. Um, and he's at 122 to 125 on my track, man. And the, the, the 327 total was just one swing that I, I posted that day that you saw it. Um, I've seen him hit it to those trees in the background at 350. So he, he can really get one going. He doesn't sometimes know how to control it, but he'll, he's learning that. That's not going to be a problem. Right. So let's see the trace. Okay. Anna, can you play it? Yeah, go ahead and play it. Let's watch this guy. Does Nico know we're doing this? I think he's watching. I, I, I told him, I gave him the link, so he better be on here. Nice. Oh, Hi, there. Nico. We're, we're really excited to have you and to watch your trace. Thanks for, uh, for letting us look at it. So we can run through. Let, yeah, let everybody see that's great, that center of pressure uh, graph there. And then I believe the velocity chart is next. Yeah, she scrolled through it. Holy mackerel. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of weight in his heels. Holy mackerel. Okay, now, now, another thing, and you've probably heard this, Mandy, a lot, but you said in his heels, um, just remember that, and Terry Hashimoto with body, you know, my buddy, he's always, he's always, you know, saying that the heels are the, the accelerators and the toes are the brakes, and I agree with him um, from a pressure standpoint. So these guys that are accelerating in their heels are, you know, doing something a little different. So I'm glad to hear you say that, because I've said, I've repeated that on this webinar many, many times. The heels are the accelerators. The toes are your brakes. I've heard Terry and lots of pros say yeah. at impact, we want all that weight in our heels, get our toes out of the way. I think Bryson's left foot is a good ex visual example of that. I don't know right. if you agree. And we'll, and we'll go over this. I, I think we should highlight when we get to it, we'll highlight Nico's tr uh, lead foot and what it's okay. doing if, if we can. I'm going to shut up. So there's the, no, you're good. You're good. This is the velocity chart. We're going two hours, Mandy. Remember. I'm, I'm in. Okay, I'm in. Cool. I got nothing I to do. Wine. <laughs> I've, I've got nothing to do. All right, so let, we can run through this one. It's kind of fun to see all this squiggly lines going up and down. 
Um, you, we can just play it. If, yeah, is it playing or is it slow mo or? There we go. Yeah, let everybody, you can see he's not over the top anymore. That's for sure. No, goodness. Oh, this might be the one that, that I actually did a, uh, a voiceover is why it's going so slow because I see my lines coming up, the arrows and all that stuff, so. Yeah, I think so. There we go. Okay, let, we can go ahead and go back to the beginning. I'll, if you want me to talk about the, the COP trace first? I what, do. What this, yes. guy's, what this guy's doing. Um, I, wish yes. I, could do, I wish I could do this. Me too. Um, okay, so Nico starts, you can see that he, he literally starts with 72% on his lead foot. You asked me a question before we went live on where I like players with their uh, driver. You know, I, I tend to not want, you know, too much on the lead side with the driver. That 72 is a little much, but what, what's cool about what you're about to see is what, he's, what he does. So if we, if we start to slowly move the, the, uh, the scroller, Nico is gonna, there he goes to 67%. As he starts to move the club away, he tends to do what Bill did. He pushes forward a little bit towards the target and then pushes back. Right. Okay, so let's see, I think. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure that video is moving, moving really slow. I don't know if we're able to, there we go. Okay, so one, let, let's go, let's go, just go to the back. Let's go to the top of the swing. And what you'll see here is Nico at, whoop, there we go. Let's go to right there. Perfect, P5, uh, P3, I'm sorry. Going back, you can see Nico has a, a, count, a small counterbalance at 55% in his trail heel, okay? He's moved that, that pressure. Now, wh what I like to see is that counterbalance because that's where the right hip is moving. The right hip is moving deep behind him. So shouldn't the trace move into his hip as well. So they're going together. I like that, right? Like got, this, the trace follows the body. Is that what you said? Well, the trace follows the, how well, is that? Yeah, and then when we get to the linear trace, you're gonna kind of see when you talk about the arc that the club makes and the, the way that the, the body pivots, it just makes sense that the trace should go into the trail heel if the right hip is moving deep behind the player. If he's yep. staying on his toes, he's kind of fighting himself. Yep. Okay, so as he starts to take the club away, you'll see he's in his trail heel, but now you can see here's the longer club. He's got 84% in his, in his right foot right now. Whew. He's, ready to, he's ready to explode into this ball. Now, we had a question emailed to me about, about peak velocities and things like that, but as, as you take Nico to the top, you'll start to see before Nico reaches the top, if we can slowly move him to the top, Anna, we'll see that he, starts to move forward the dot is going to move forward prior to oh, yeah. look at that prior yep. to him finishing right there. his backswing he's already pressured into his lead side and he's got 67 percent in his lead toe right now that is the screen capture right there okay and Folks, there there is that to the, memory Woo. So I, you know, peak velocity, as far as that velocity chart of this, you know, I think it was um, David, David Rand, Rand yeah. asked the question uh, through an email. Um, I usually see it, I'm not sure Terry and I were just texting about this, but I usually see it, you know, post transition, right after transition, you'll start to see the velocity peak. I believe if we went to the velocity chart, we don't need to right now, he's, he's peaking early. He's peaking, you know, as, as he's transitioning. So you can see he's already put the pressure into the lead side, 67% on his toe and 83%. So he's moving heel toe. And if you took away the rest of the white, the, the yellow line, the trace, you would see that, that what he's done so far is all heel toe, is all linear. But now he's about to explode into the ball. Okay. You want to say yeah. anything or you want me to keep going? I no, keep I'll just going. keep going. Keep going. all night. Let's do it. All right. So now, as if you if you want to go to the next graph, which you should be able to do, and if we go to that same point, I'd like to take it actually to after that explosion that 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 press into his lead side. If we could take him down to what we call P six position six delivery, which would be where the shaft of the club is parallel to the ground. Keep coming. Keep coming. Okay, right about, keep going right there. 
you can see if you look up in the in the upper right hand corner, first of all, you see the, the red line in the middle there where we are, and you see the white peak going down, not going up, it's going down. He is at lateral 266 on his back foot right now with velocity. Okay. From P6, which is right here in this position, P7 being impact, P8 would be parallel on the other side after impact. Let's watch. And that's that other peak there. So let's move it to P8. He's in his toe right now, big time. Yeah. Okay. And then. So we'll go to. So there's impact coming. Now let's go to P8 parallel. You can see the face react right there. A little bit Ooh. more. A little bit more. One more click. Keep coming. One more click, I think, and we, we should have it. I, yeah. Right there, if you look at the lateral box, the white box on the upper right, it's now positive 353. So he's gone from a negative 260 something to a positive 353 in, in velocity with that. And to me, that's why, that's why he's hitting it so far. He's moving it, he's moving it early and he's, he's exploding that club. Now, if you can click back just a little bit, we talked about the, the lead foot and what that's doing. When he pressed into the lead foot as much as he did at the top of his swing. Yeah, there we go. Let's go to the COP graph again, if we can, I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. So now you can see that right at this point, Nico has 100% of the pressure in his lead toe. It doesn't look like, it looks like he's touching the mat, but he's essentially floating. He's, he's off the ground right now with his lead foot. His lead Unbelievable. Feet. He's got 100 in his toe. And then watch his, his lead foot and what it does. So what he's done is he's applied anterior pressure into his lead toe going forward, pressing down and forward. And then the reaction is what you're about to see in his lead foot. So let's let it rip. There it is. You see that lead foot sliding and up on his toes a little bit, a la Bubba Watson and Kyle Berkshire and all those guys. Yep. Yeah, I was about to say Kyle Berkshire is definitely uh, off the toe or off the, off the ground. Right. Okay, nice. So that's kind of what Nico does. And this is why Nico, you know, hits it so far. He creates incredible, you know, pressure into the ground and swings his arms and upper body quickly. Everything's just slingshotting through is basically what we saw there. Slingshotting through is such a great... Yeah way to say that or describe that. Wow, that's awesome. That yeah, is a great, good. great trace. Paul Woodbury is gonna wanna see that trace uh, for sure. All right. Uh, I, think, I, I have the video in my, in my V1 that's, that we can just play full speed. That was a, I think that was a voiceover that I did for Nico. Um, I think that's so too. See, that's why you see arrows coming up and all this, but I have it. So if anybody ever wants it, just um, right. let me know. Um, should we move on to another one? Sure. Anybody have any questions about that? Or we want to, whatever, you, whatever, you're the boss. Please let us know questions. If you'd like, if you have about Nico's trace here um, and we will, Anna can pull it back up. We're happy to go back to it. Okay. So we have another golfer that we might recognize that has a cool abbreviated trace. Um, so Anna, this is Michael Allen's trace. If you could pull that one up and Eric, while she does that, do you mind telling everyone what an abbreviated trace is? Well, it, just like it sounds, it doesn't move a lot. Um, abbreviated trace is, is what we, what I coach and um, for, for a lot of short game shots. Um, in short game, we're trying to take the power out. We're not really, power is not necessary, especially at this level. These guys are, I mean, this is the 2009, you know, PGA champion on the seniors tour. So we're, we're, not, we're not trying to hit this thing as hard as we can. We're trying to control it. And he's, he's one of the best. He's one of the best ball strikers I've ever met. He's a good guy. Um, so what we see here is Michael's got a sand wedge in his hand. I think we were hitting, to believe it or not, hitting 90-yard uh, shots here at TPC Scottsdale. Um, and you can see he starts with 74% on his lead side. You can see the red and the, mm -hmm. you know, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see how much pressure he's got on that, on that uh, foot. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is if you look at the, the numbers on the top of the, the chart, there's the four quadrants, right-hand side, the left-hand side, 62. There you go, perfect. And the right-hand side is 72. Those are the balls of his feet. And the smaller numbers below that are the heels. I prefer in my coaching to have the player more on the balls of their feet throughout this stroke. Um, not on the toes so much, but on the balls of the feet, that allows the club to come down in front of the player a little bit better 
than if they were sitting too far back in their heels, heels where they could really, what we call dumping it. They could really get, get, get from the inside and, and make poor contact. So I kind of like that Michael's on the balls of his feet right here. Um, and I definitely like that he's at 74% pressure on his lead side. Um, okay. And you can, you can move it away anytime that you like. Maybe go back, you know, halfway or, yeah, there we go. So as he starts to move away, um, by the way, there's our linear trace walking in the background. So watch out. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> All right. So um, as we, there we go. Now you can watch him. Yeah, hit it. You can see the trace on a plated all the way through. You can see the white line that, that creates our trace. You can see that it didn't move to the right much, if any. Um, I do have some, some players. Um, I've got one young gun, uh, Brandon Farney, that doesn't move that off that line at all for his wet shots. He controls his trajectory and spin amazing. Um, wow. So let's go back and I'll, I'll go over some key points that, that Michael does so well. Okay, so again, he starts at 76. And if we start to slowly take, take it back to maybe where the shaft is in P2, position two parallel to the ground, right about there, you can see he does move a little bit off the ball. But again, this is, this is I think if I remember right, this is a 90 yard shot. So that's, that's, that's a decent sand wedge, you know. Um, it's not a 40 yard little pitch shot where he probably wouldn't move off the, the uh, middle at all. Um, and then it, you can see, so he's pretty balanced out right here. Okay, he's got a little bit more in his, in his lead heel at the 68%. Okay, we can go back a little bit further, but watch what's about to happen. That's, that's about, so he's gone to, there he went to 56. Now he starts to move it back. So now he's recentering himself. Okay, mm -hmm. and you're going to P5, he's back to where he started and at impact, he's 86% in his lead side, if you see that, there you go. Perfect. So would I like to see that little abbreviated trace a little more linear? Maybe, but this thing went right at, I remember this shot, it went right at the target. Um, and he's, he's a hell of a wedge player. So at impact, it, you got, we've got 80, 86, 80, 14 wow. on his trail. So he's 86. So he started at what, 74, I believe, and, and went to 86. And you can see most of his pressures out on the balls of his feet. So you can call it the toes if you like, um, but they're not, he's solid in the ground right now. Yeah. For sure. And you can see that you can see the shaft, you can see the, the, you know, the flat spot, he's controlling it down there. That's awesome. That is a great yeah, example very, of, a, great. of an abbreviated trace. Um, Eric, I've got a couple yeah. questions and then we'll, we'll one of us okay. about Nika's and we'll go back to it. But um, this one is from Kevin McLaughlin. Thanks for joining me, Kevin. Kevin, as players load into the lead foot and spring up, I tend to hit the driver off the toe. How do you coach students to make this move and stay in the shot slash maintain posture? Well, there you go. I mean, main, how do I coach maintaining posture or how do I? Well, so they say, so they're saying um, when you hit the dry, I, they spring up, stand up. How do you coach them to stay in the shot and maintain posture and not and jump? You, you, well, I mean, I'd have to see the swing. I'd have to see the video of the player. Everybody's a little bit different, but I would say that, I mean, maintaining shoulder tilts through impact. Um, there's a lot of talk about going down into the ground and coming back up on TV and we watch a lot of things, but knowing how to do it is different. Um, I believe that if you pressure into your lead side and you just try to stand up out of the golf swing, you're going to stand up out of your posture. So we need to make sure that we have right side bend through impact. Shoulders need okay. to be tilting through impact regardless. Yeah. Okay. Hope that um, helps. David McBain says, what would it look like if Michael was in his sock feet? <laughs> If he was in his sock feet? Yeah, he says he's wrestling with the idea that we're looking at the ball of his feet. Really? I'm not sure what David means by that. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means, but um, he's pretty solid into the ground. He's, you can see the ball is not way up on the toes. That, right. that, le that left, you know, it looks like a storm on a weather map. Um, yeah. the, le the left side, the, the, the red, I mean, if you go to the very tip of that, top tip of that, that's the toes. Right. So he's right. throwing the ball of the foot right now. He's not, I mean, this is For a, sure. this is an, this is an eight time winner out there, dude. So he's not, he's not so much on his toes. I think you'd see to answer the question. I think you'd see his heels off the ground a little bit or his bare foot, or he might Maybe. even be grabbing a little, he might even be grabbing and being a little more centered without his shoes on. So yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I couldn't answer that really. So this is a question about Nico. We don't necessarily need to look at the trace. Um, we can look at Eric's face to answer this Anna, but 
Um, the question is, it's up to you. You don't have to change the share. But the question is, how did you change Nico from an over-the-top player to an on-plane and massive front foot pressure in transition so quickly? Our, uh, well, to keep it simple, the old standard, um, first we, I mean, he was on, I taught him how to, how to understand face and path. And in my opinion, and I, I hope Bill's on here because this is, this will come right from the Harmon mouth. Um, the face is the biggest influencer of path. I've learned that from Bill and, and Butch. Butch doesn't know he taught it to me, but I learned it when I was there observing at the Harmon golf school those years. Um, the face, if the face influences the path and if person spends 20 years with an open golf club coming down and into impact, the only thing they're going to learn how to do is swing left. So I taught Nico, and that's what Nico was doing. Nico's face was wide open and he was swinging left as a result of the face. So we taught Nico to, to increase lead wrist flexion. Uh, first thing he started to do was pull the, pull the heck out of the ball because now his face was matching where the path was going. And I explained that to him. We had him on track, man. And he started to understand the concept, um, began to close the face, it squared to the path, and then he could start to swing to the right. If I didn't close the face first, in my opinion, and taught him to swing to the right, he would have shanked it. Hmm. He would have been coming from the inside with an open face and the hosel is exposed. So um, if face is the biggest influencer of path, you have to fix it first. So that's what we did with Nico. And then he spent literally every weekend for four hours swinging underneath a noodle that I attached to an alignment stick, like, you know, everybody else yeah. in the world uses. Um, and, he love and now, yeah. He yeah, that's what I did. That's awesome. That's, uh, I love everyone's crazy training aids, but the pool noodles, uh, certainly a great one. Okay, so I'm, yeah. I, I, I gotta see, you told us you have the best linear trace you've ever seen. And uh, I've gotta see it. So you guys, let's have a look at Gary Hallbrook's trace. It's huh? supposedly the best linear trace that Eric's ever seen. I'm so excited. Anna, can you pull that one up for us? Now, before, as Anna's doing that, I will say, I didn't send it to you, but I got to give credit to one of my young juniors that I taught for since, when she was little. Um, from the time she was, I don't know, I, I think I picked her up from my staff at around 10 or 11, 12, 13 years old or something. Um, her name's Maddie Chu, and, and she ended up going on and playing for Stanford, and she just graduated. Um, you know, Walk, Coach Walker does an amazing job out there, but she probably is as linear as I've seen as well, but I really like Gary Hallberg's linear trace. Now, Gary just happened to be at TPC Scottsdale the day I was there working with Michael. And uh, I had, we had to get him on the mat. He had to get on that. I know he's been on this mat on, on Jake Thurm's mat with Terry. Yep. Um, and I saw a different trace from, from, from Jake Thurm's mat. And then from what I saw, cause I wasn't expecting to, and this was after we talked about a couple things, but this linear trace is amazing if you want to play it. Yeah, play it, Anna. Look at that. What? Okay, so <laughs> you played a couple times because it's kind of cool to see. And, and now this is a 12, this, I think he has 12, P, uh, not PJ Tour, but he has 12 professional wins. Um, I believe he's coming top six at the Masters over the years. And uh, Gary's a little bit older than I. I remember watching Gary play at the U.S. Open at Olympic Club when I was young. And I followed him because I loved his swing so much back then. Um, but you can see that trace. And here, what we were discussing earlier is if you think of, and especially for the golf pros that are watching, that are, that are you know, always studying the golf swing, is if you watch his trace, it made me start thinking that, man, his trace is really following the pivot of his body. It looks like it, it, it is. Arc. It's arcing yeah. like his body would pivot. He is one of the purest ball strikers I've ever, I've ever seen. And even when he was on the PGA Tour when he was younger. Um, but he still hits the ball incredibly well. Um, he's, he's awesome. But you can see he starts, if we want to go over it, he starts very 50-50. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with a player that starts 50-50, I, I usually, you know, I'm really, really big. And he comes from that era with me. And I don't know where, what he was taught over the years and this and that. But he comes from that era where we were taught to shift to the right and, you know, shift back to the left. And, and now that we're all older, we're all thinking, man, that's pretty hard to time. 
but he does an incredible job, right? So he starts at 50-50. And for a 50-50 player with me, I really, really work on a center pivot. I don't want a lot of shifting from a 50-50 position to the right because now I've got a player that needs to shift back laterally to get back to the ball and rotate at the same time. So I'd rather not have him shift too much. But as you see, like with Bill Harmon and the other players, if you look at the 50-50 on the bottom, as Gary starts to move the club away just a couple clicks, I believe you're going to see the 50 on his lead side increase before the club even starts back. There it goes, 51. Yeah. 50. <laughs> 51, 52, 53, 54. Okay, so he hit 54. There he is. Before yep. the club's even taken back. So he's increasing pressure, which I call a skate. And I think there's some other guys out there might call it that. He skates left to move right. All right. And you can see how linear this is. Okay, so at this point at P at P2 in the golf swing, which is for the non-golf pros out there, that's the position where the shaft is parallel to the ground. He's at 53% in his trail heel already. Mm. Okay, and he's moved 69% of his pressure to his trail foot. So he's moving right, but he's, up, he's in balance. As balanced as you're going to get, in my opinion. All right, we can go, let's go to P3 where he's parallel to the ground with his lead arm. Excuse me. One more, there we go. All right, perfect counterbalance. So if you think of the way the hip is turning, this is the way I view things now after having Gary on my mat, is if you think of the way the hip rotates around the trail leg and it goes deep behind you, and I'm big in hand depth and big in, in hip depth, is that's where the tray should go, right? I mean, that's my opinion. It should go into the heel. And there's a beautiful counterbalance. And, and he, gets, he gets up there. So 60 would be a counterbalance. Anything above that, I think, is just, you know, it's just gravy. You know, it's just extra. Right. Okay, and he's moved 79 into his, into his trail foot. Okay, and we can go a little bit further and you can see his, he's got 79% on his, on his left toe because his heel's a little bit coming off the ground, which is great. Now look at this, at Woo! P4, at the very top of his swing, Gary's got 87% in his trail heel. That's a, it's the biggest counterbalance I've seen. Um, and he's got 80%. I mean, he's got the textbook 80-20. That's what everybody's talking amazing. about. That's it, amazing. You couldn't, it's huh? not like you could rec recreate that. I think no, the counterbalance is so important to, to yeah. understand that in the golf swing. Out there, for the coaches out yeah. there, take a look at this, take a look at his glove hand. Look at that long thumb. Whew. Just for the coach, just for the coaches, just a little side note. And so, so as we transition, here's the, here's the thing. Now for me, he's, he's very centered to the ball, even though he's shifted a little bit to the right, his upper body is extending a little bit, um, which is, which is good. That keeps him centered over the ball. And then he's going to, he's going to travel back. If we can go down to P5, which is lead arm parallel to the ground, you start seeing the movement. Now here is old school right here on this back foot still. See how he's still 70%, but he's pressing in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now he's going to keep shifting. That was P5. Okay. Okay. Now he's right before impact. Okay. There he is. 68%, which is decent impact position with most of it being up on his on the ball of his foot right and pretty centered because you can see the dot is almost to the middle and if it we is. go one more if we go one more click if we can get impact Whew. yeah there you go he stays right there he doesn't move through him so he's 73 to 78 right past impacts you know p seven and a half or whatever you want to call it okay but that is a very that is a very linear trace and probably one of the best ball strikers i've ever had on a mat i love it i also yeah. love that you said he taught you about how the trace sort of follows the pivot of the body. And I think that's well, so by, important. Yeah, just by looking at it, I learned that. Yeah, we didn't talk about it. I just, I kind of, that's what I took away from this. Well, I, Eric, I tell pros all the time, like, how do you learn to do it? I go, well, get on the mat, put your students on the mat, look at the traces, you know, look at what you're, what you're seeing and, and what it relates to what you know as far as instruction. That point you made is really cool that you're, you know, you got this high level golfer on and boy, what a trace. What yeah, a trace. Nice. It, was, it was nice to have it was nice to have him there. I mean, he's a he's a great guy. Just a, and a great really, swinger. really unbelievable. Um, okay. We have 10, 11 minutes left. We have a heel trove trace. We have um, the junior with huge verticals and then some commonalities. What is I, you know, I'd love to talk to, about all three of those things. I don't know that we'll be like talking. Go ahead. 
What's your favorite? What do you want to talk to the about the commonalities or the junior? Well, I'd like to show Esteban because he's my guy. All right, let's do it. The heel toe. Let's do it. If we can, if we can go over five minutes, I don't know. Heck um, yeah. Heck all right, yeah. Esteban, I'll, I'll real quick for the everybody out there. Um, and before he, Esteban was going through qualifying for the Champions Tour um, back when he turned 50. On the PGA Tour, my opinion, my opinion to, and my advice to him was that he needed to get rid of the two way miss. And he's, he's got the most incredible short game you'll ever see. Um, but his, he did have a little bit of a two way miss. So he and I worked literally from the time he, he went to qualifying school, which he qualified, came in top four, top five, which is tougher than the PGA Tour to get on. Um, to the time he you know took his fourth or fifth win um we tried to get him off his toe he's a perfect example in my opinion of a heel toe trace um, where a player goes into their trail heel and moves laterally into the ball of their their lead foot but if you stay on that lead foot which is as we talked about at the beginning is the break in the golf swing the face is very difficult to control because the pelvis isn't getting out of the way and you're not getting the the angular hip movement to the left as the as the foot moves into the heel so we really worked on getting him to be aware and have an intention of after he initiated his transition into the ball of his foot to let the pressure move into the heel and you can see there he does a pretty good job of it here this is after we did um, a drill um, where I had him pressing hard into his lead toe and pushing and having the pressure. So I tried to get the force to create the movement into his heel um, to create that, ang first of all, angular velocity, which is speed of the hip um, moving behind him at the right time. And we started to straighten it out and we started to play a fade. And we, we literally worked on the same thing for four years after that. It just started to work and we started not to miss left as much. You always miss, you know, but. Right. Um, you just want to, you, you know, Michael Allen said something to me about that particular subject as far as missing. And, and there was a time when, when we were on the mat at Newport Beach um, before the Toshiba one year. And I said, we we're out to dinner. And I said, Michael, I, it sounds from what you were saying today at the, at the practice center that you want to hit a draw. That's what it sounded like to me when we were there. And he goes, actually, Eric, you know, I don't necessarily want to hit a draw all the time. He goes, I want to hit a shot I can count on under pressure. And when he told me that, that clicked, that rung a bell as well. So I learned a lot more from these guys than they learned from me, I'll tell you that, um, and the Harmons. But this, this is a perfect example of us trying to get rid of a two-way miss. And we both think it worked. I mean, he went out and won four, you know, four or five times after that in a five-year five year span. So he got a couple in the same year. Um, he's a great guy. He's a great player and best short game I've, I've ever seen. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Thank you for uh, sharing Esteban's trace. That's yeah, I gotta special. go. I had to show him. He's my guy. So yeah, man. Love this I guy. Hope he, I do too. He's awesome. Okay. So do you want to talk about the junior with the huge verticals and look at that velocity chart? Sure. Anna, do you have that one teed up? This one's cute. <laughs> for the junior coaches and the parents that are maybe watching that have young kids. Um, we hear a lot about using the ground. Um, we do create speed with other parts of our bodies. Obviously, we, our arms are swinging, our hands are swinging, our torsos are rotating. Um, I'm not sure where it is, but um, we, we hear a lot about using the ground. Now, th these guys on tour, if we looked at their, their verticals, um, I like to see, and I know David Rand, Rands? Rands, yes. He asked a question about um, how I use those charts. Well, like I said earlier, I like to see the velocity of the center of pressure post just after um, transition. So we'll start to see the, the, the speed of the, of the COP. But as far as verticals go, I like to, I like to look at the vertical chart on, um, at P5, at lead arm parallel to the ground. And I think that's when most players reach uh, maximum vertical force into the ground. And there's a lot of drills that you can do to get people to do that. Um, and that's what you, if we went back and we could look at all those guys in P5, you'd see that they're all doing that. They're pretty much reaching at that. I think Esteban reached it a little later, um, but he, okay. you know, P5 is where you want to reach peak, peak velocity as far as vertical pressure into the ground. And this little girl does an incredible job if we have it. I don't know if we have it. So two things, the bad news is we don't have it. The good news is that okay. means you get to come back and do Tuesday traces with us again. 
Oh. <laughs> so that we can oh, look yeah. at it next time. You can time. see we can do this so, for a long time. It's getting so dark we, where we, you are. We set you up. We we intentionally don't have it so that that means you have to come back. Oh, uh, you're the best. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She uh, She's not seeing that one in the library right at the moment. That's okay. I but, mean, yeah, she's amazing, the little kid. So we'll we'll see that one soon. But we do have a few more minutes. And you said that there's some commonalities between all these traces that you'd like to talk about. And yeah, I think that's well, so I put some important. Notes, notes together. And as a coach, I mean, it's important to, to understand what the good players are doing. What are they doing differently? Um, don't you don't need to coach everybody like you know like a tour player, but you it is it is good to study what the good players have done historically and what they're doing now and how they all because they all look different on 2D. They all look different uh, on the body track. They all look different, you know, when you do 3D. They're all a little bit different, but they are doing some things that are common. Now, the first one is, and we talked about it in all of them, was that they they set up with more pressure in their lead side. So if you're left-handed, that's your right. If you're right-handed, that's your left foot. They all tend to start, there's some that start 50-50, but hardly any golfers that I've seen that strike the ball very well um, start on their right foot or their trail foot. Um, okay. they're, all, they're always dynamic. And, and static and all these players were that we saw today they're they're not they're never static as they're setting up they're never they're always moving um kyle berkshire is a you know an extreme example and you're starting to see this all over the internet um and and so is bryson i mean bryson's not stuck on the ground not moving if you really watch the pressure trace um on the body track you'll see they're always moving they're moving back and forth and terry would call it the golf dance which is, you know, dance. check that out. So, so Terry's got the golf dance. He's got it. Right. Um, that's what they're doing. So why not coach it? Don't, 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 you know, do something that the, the good players aren't doing. It's the winding um, up, right? They the all winding have a flight. Up the tower, right. The winding well, you're getting up the a tower. feel for it. Yeah. You got to move into the ground. Yeah. 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 Um, they all have a slight pressure shift towards the target to initiate the move away or what I call the skate. And there's other pros that call it that as well. You're kind of skating, like you're going back and forth, like you're sliding. Um, so they all do, they all seem to do that. They don't, they don't just start statically and move right. They actually get themselves going a little bit left like Bill did and, and uh, Michael Allen. And well, we didn't see Michael Allen's iron trace, but um, Esteban, all of them move a little bit left. Nico for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then the trail heel, heel uh, counterbalance. Um, if you have players that are in their toes too much at the top of their swing, you're going to have issues. And if, if what I think is true, that the, the trace, the path will follow the trace and you're on your toes, where's the club going to go? Right. My toes are out here. I want to be in here. Um, so they all see, they all seem to have a counterbalance. Um, and they begin the chef, the, the pressure shift back towards the target at around prior to reaching the top of their backswing. That's what good players do. So before a player reaches P4, they're starting to move this way. However they do it, coaches need to figure that out, but they are pressuring left prior. They're not static on their right leg. They're doing it prior. So the movement is there. So they're here and it's, it's again, it's like a golf dance, like Terry would say. Um, and then 75% uh, or more at impact on their left side. I mean, if, you, if, you, if I took those six things and could, figure out a way to teach my kid. And I've got, you know, pretty darn good player, my oldest son. Um, I, I think they would do pretty well at ball striking. When you say impact 75 or more, as much I as like possible. To, oh, you, yeah, I've seen 90, you know, um, Brandon, one of my young guns, he's, he's at 90%. And it's funny because Brandon came to a session um, last week and he said, man, coach, before we started, I my iron's so good. And we've been working on a lot of things, you know? And I got him on the mat and he was at 92% of impact on his lead side. And I said, there you go. Unbelievable. You're controlling the face. He's already, he's already got a perfect matchup. His track man matchup is one and a half, you know, draw. I mean, he's, it's perfect. Um, but then he puts the pressure a little bit more on his lead side at the right time. And he controls the face even better, controls the flat spot. And he, it, you can't even tell if it's drawing or fading when you get to that point. So. That's amazing. That's awesome. So do you give lessons to just anybody? If I, if you, are you taking new students? I mean, I can always do online stuff for, right now, but my, my schedule at the Academy is, is pretty booked. Um, I do have, That's why I was I asking. Have, you know, I always, have, openings always come up for my competitive junior golfers. That's what I teach mostly. So, um, but yeah, my online stuff, 
but I do online lessons around the world. I have people in Norway and I have a kid on the national team in, uh, in Bhutan. Hope, I wish he was watching. He's a good kid. I love it. I mean, he lives so up if, near the Himalayas. So this V1 thing is crazy. This, so if people want to take a lesson or send you a video, they can connect with you through the V1 app or your website and send you a video. Correct. correct? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. And as a awesome. matter of fact, um, Thrive Sports, Thrive Sports, who did my website, they, uh, they put the, v there's an online lesson page there with a click, click to get a hold of me with an email or click to get the V1 app on your phone. So it's right there. So all you have to do is click it and there's an online lesson Perfect. page. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to wrap us up. Eric, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Anna did message me and she found the video, but I still want to save it so that you will have to come back uh -oh. and trace with me again, because this has been so informative. We, I'm sure everyone's going to send messages that we learned so much tonight. Uh, but please, you guys go follow Eric Corvey on YouTube and Instagram. He's got some amazing videos um, of the tour players. If you have questions for Eric, you can feel free to email me or Kelly. Um, Kelly's marketing at v1sports.com or kelly.hurst. I'm mandy.donc at v1sports.com. And Eric, yeah, we just really appreciate you being here. Please let us know what we can do to support you. And uh, yeah, really, really awesome information tonight. I learned so much and I'm so grateful. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I really do. Well, thanks. And good night, everyone. We'll see you see in you, two weeks. We'll be broadcasting live from the Masters, so it should be fun. Oh, awesome.